Um, here you've got two new objects. Um, you don't necessarily need to know all about these at this point. Uh, we'll come back to them uh, and discuss this in, in more detail in due course. Um, <clears throat> but we have two uh, objects which are designed to make, uh, well, not necessarily to make sound, in fact, that's not what they do, but to, um, to, to yield a sound output, let's put it like that. Um, so you have a make note object with two arguments, that's the name of these, um, uh, these two values that are in on the right hand side. So this is the configuration of any object. You put the object name in, then you put a space. It always needs space. Then you put uh, your arguments separated by spaces. And the same is true of the note out object here. Um, so what do they do? Um, the, neither of them, as I say, make any sound themselves. The note out object is designed to communicate with your uh, your computer's onboard synth. Um, and in fact, it could communicate with any MIDI device if we wanted it to, but that's what it's actually sending. It's going to be sending MIDI notes uh, to, um, to whatever device you send it to. And in fact, you can choose which device you send it to if you double-click on the object and it gives you various um, output um, routes, if you like. So AU, AU, so that's Audio Unit, DLS Synth, will give us some general MIDI sounds. And then you can also send through two MIDI channels from Max MSP1, from Max MSP2. This means that you can communicate with a an external uh, device. So that could be Logic Audio, or, or sorry, Logic Pro, um, or it could be Pro Tools or whatever. Just anything that, that accepts MIDI. In that application, you uh, once Max is running and you've sent this to Mac from Max MSP, whatever, um, you should have the option in your uh, in the place that you're looking to send it. Um, that also says from Max MSP, and that means that you can route it internally on your computer. However, at the moment we want the the synth, um, <coughs> and at the moment it's outputting to channel ten. So if I click on these, we get MIDI percussion sounds because channel ten is the MIDI percussion channel, and uh, that's what it tends to default to. Um, if we were to change that channel to number one, which you can do yourselves, you will end up with piano sounds. And there's another object which will enable you to change the program um, so that you can get different um, different timbres out. But at the moment, as I say, we're sticking to the, uh, the percussion channel, which is channel 10, and that's sending to the uh, your onboard synth. <coughs> the make note object is there... Um, to send note on and note off messages to the uh, to the to the synth or to note out, um, which as I say in turn turns it onto the synth. So thirty five is the lowest note on a MIDI keyboard or one of the lowest anyway. I'm not sure that it's absolutely the lowest, but I click on that and what make note does is to send a note on message to start the. Um, the, the sound sounding and then a note off message to stop it and the time between that is determined by this argument on the right hand side so that is the note duration and then the 127 that's here is to determine the velocity of that note so you could change that so at the moment we've got um, a, a bass drum sound and then we have a snare sound and we have um, a I don't know what that is but anyway <coughs> and we can um, uh, run through those, in fact, by using a number. Yeah, so how thrilling is that? Again, the inlets are um, are to deter well are specific to particular parameters that you want to be able to change. So if I unlock the patch, you know, I hover over the left hand side, we get it says it's the pitch that we want to send to the left hand side. Um, so thirty five is the pitch. 35, um, which I'm not entirely sure exactly what that is, probably bottom C or something. <coughs> um, and then the middle one is a velocity, so you can change the velocity. So again, it defaults because we've put in an argument of 127 to 127, uh, but we could overwrite that or overrule that by sending to the middle inlet. And then on the right-hand side, um, you have duration, so you could overrule the 200 millisecond duration of that, that note. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that at the moment, just to know that you need these two in combination at this stage to, um, to give us a, a note 
which doesn't last forever. Because if I were to send these notes directly to note out, they would still make the sound start, but there'd be nothing to tell it to stop. So we just get saturation of MIDI notes which never end. And in the case of percussion sounds, that probably wouldn't be too much of a problem. But if we were using um, an organ sound or something, the organ sound would never end because you're not sending it a note off message. Um, anyway, so that's that. <coughs> so we can move on to the next bit, which is this one. Um, and here we've got another couple of objects which I <coughs> appeared in the uh, tutorial 00. zero. <coughs> counter and select, and here too these ones have arguments. So counter has one and four, and <coughs> this means it's when it's got two arguments in it, it's counting between one and four. Um, so ignoring this bit down here at the moment, which I'll come to in a minute, if I click on the button object, <coughs> that sends a bang to counter. And remember that bang tells what the object it receives to do whatever it does. Yeah, to do whatever it is that it does. So counter counts. So I send, whoops, sorry, I've the patch. <coughs> I send one bang to counter and it counts to one. I send another bang to counter and it counts to two and so on, three, four, and then it loops round. So once it's finished with four, it counts at one again. So we can just keep sending that to count. Um, <coughs> later on, we will find that if you add a third argument, which precedes these other two, um, then you can tell counter which direction to count in. So you can make it count upwards or downwards, or then or up and then down. Um, but we'll come back to that. For the moment, we'll just use two arguments, and they are one and four, and you can see what they do. Then you have the select object. So again, we have select followed by space and then various arguments followed by space. And in select's case, <coughs> you can use a v various different numbers of arguments. So you could have, in this case, there are four arguments, one, two, three, and four, but you could have, uh, I think you can have up to 30, 30 arguments for a select, or maybe even 32 arguments. So they, it could go one, two, three, four. It might not even be in that order. You could have one, five, three, two, four, seven, whatever. Um, at the moment, we've got one, two, three, and four. And then out of each of these outlets here, those refer to the arguments that are here. All right. So this outlet here refers to this argument. This outlet here refers to this argument. This outlet refers to this argument. This outlet refers to this one. The last output, there's always, there's always an outlet which... Um, doesn't refer to any of the numbers, um, and that's to output anything that select doesn't recognise. So select is there to recognise the numbers that come in. If we send it a 1, it will look along its list of arguments and say, OK, do I have a 1 in here? Well, it does. And the 1 is in the first position. So it will send a bang out of the first outlet to say, yes, I recognise that. Um, then it receives a 2. And it looks along its list of arguments and says, oh, can I, can I find a 2? Yes, it's found a 2. And the 2 is the second argument in the chain. And so it sends it out of the second outlet. And then so on. So 3 looks along, finds a 3. And 3 is in the third position along, so it sends it out the third outlet. Bing! And then 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the fourth 1. So it sends it out the fourth outlet. Now, just to avoid confusion, or maybe to <laughs> increase confusion... Um, if I unlock the patch and put those in a different order, like that, <coughs> it would still... Oh, let's make this pretty. There you go. And um, it would still work. But this time, if I go, if I click on 1, well, it looks along the list and finds that 1 is now in the third position. So it sends a bang out of the third outlet. Do it again, and it, send, it finds a 2, but the first, uh, 2 is in the first position, so it sends it out the first outlet. Do again, 3, recognises 3, but now 3 is in the second position, so it sends it out the second outlet. OK, so the, um, the, it, re it looks along its list to find the number and recognises it, but whichever one it outputs from is determined by the position of that number within the argument list. OK, I've run out of time. <coughs> <coughs> 